morning everybody. I'll be evaluating or maybe mostly listening to the thoughts and ideas which are going to be shared by today's second speaker. Our second speaker is a year old speaker. Uh, sorry, third speaker third is a year old speaker with uh, GTMC and otherwise he has been a Toastmaster for a while and has been the recipient of the third speech uh, position for the evaluation section as well as table topics at the area level and we look forward to his gyan and insight which he has, what he has gathered during this experience. So I welcome Toastmaster Jaspreet with the title of the speech as giving back and with the timer I have a request please be little generous. It is his speech where he will be moving out from uh, the uh, club so we duly have respected uh, respect it is respect his time and where he has made that space to come over and give his speech. So thank you, Toastmaster Jaspreet. Toastmaster Jaspreet. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, firstly, morning. this is an educational session. Uh, timer, please note you can time in for uh, three to five minutes. Uh, dreams. You know, APJ Abdul Kalam sir's favorite line, which resonates with me. Dreams is not what you see when you sleep. Dream are those that don't let you sleep. I repeat, I reiterate, dreams are not what you see while sleeping. Dreams are the things that don't let you sleep. So fellow Toastmasters, guess, never stop dreaming. Never underestimate yourself. Always have that spark in you. As we also learned about the Juari effect, that is always keep dreaming bigger. Try to achieve bigger. So today, I would like to tell you a few traits that I learned in Toastmasters, especially when it comes to competitions. My first half of the session would be on speech evaluation. So during Toastmasters, the most important thing is about evaluation, is how you take evaluation as well and how you give evaluation. So to all the speakers and the evaluators here, I would like to share three traits that I usually follow while evaluating. The first trait, the first thing that I observe is the title. A speaker always emphasizes on the title of his speech. So as an evaluator, Please make it a point to understand the title better. Sometimes the title gives a lot of feedback or what the story is all about. So always emphasize on the title. The second thing that a speech evaluator should look into is the content, the story, the how the story prospers. I can, you know, when Mohit was speaking, I could actually see him riding the bike. I was sitting behind him and telling him, please don't take that left turn, go slow. So you know, <laughs> as a speaker, as an evaluator, you should get into that story feel as if it is in your own shoes. So this would be my second trait. Follow the story, imagine yourself in those shoes. If you do this, you'll become a very good evaluator. The third thing, the most important thing is about feedback. Usually, uh, sometimes we find it difficult to give a feedback to the speaker. Uh, if I would have to be an evaluator, always find the loose ends. Like, I would, if I was an evaluator for Mohit's speech, I would like to know what happened to his friend. What happened to that bike? How did you repair it? You know, there are always such loose ends that a person leaves. So find these loose ends and work on them. Well, you can always tell about, as an evaluator, you should always emphasize on the content because there are people who are doing body language, there are people who are doing the grammar. So always emphasize on the content. And the most important thing as an evaluator one should do is always leave a mark. What I mean to say is, today if I go back home, what is one thing that I can remember about Mohit's speech or somebody's speech? So evaluators should be able to tell that to the audience. So if, if an evaluator follows these traits, the evaluation would be of a great help to the speaker. So I just repeat them. First, look at the title. Always emphasize on the title. Second, look at the content, what the speech is all about. Uh, do not speak much about the body language, but emphasize more on the content. Follow the story. Be in his own shoes. Imagine yourself in that situation, riding that bike, wearing those leather gears and everything, wearing the helmet and driving. So that is one thing. And secondly, thirdly, the most important thing is leaving a mark. Always remember that the speaker takes something, something that you can help him out to improve better. These were the three traits as an evaluator one can do. And uh, the most fun part of the meeting is always a table topic session. Uh, for table topics, always be impromptu. Always have a story with you. Most of the area level competitions always have a quote. So I would recommend uh, the participants who are participating this year to learn more quotes. Always use quotes in your speech 
I always keep the story very personal. When you keep a story very personal, the audience can easily connect to that. So keep a story personal, uh, have a good quotes with you, and always leave a mark something. Even I as a person always believe in that, that whatever you do, leave a mark to the world, make the society a better place, try to contribute as much as you can uh, to the whole world. Even a small act of kindness that one does can make a big difference. Uh, like the way uh, Vivek sir also made that game today, he brought a smile to our face. So I think as a table topic or as just as a person, always try to leave a mark in the world, try to make the world a happy place. On that note, I sign off. Thank you. If you have any questions, if anyone has for the competitions, you may get in touch with me or anything in generic about Toastmasters, about speech evaluations, I'll be very happy to uh, help all of you. Maybe we could just have a minute if there's time for it. If there's a minute now, uh, anyone who would like to ask some questions regarding evaluation or I'm being humble, I'm not a great person, I'll try to share my experience for the competitions, whatever I had. Anyone who would like to speak about anything about evaluations or uh, table topics in general during a competition is most open. You'll keep this one minute with us. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, Vivek, sir. Uh, Vivek. Yeah. Uh, I have joined Postmaster six months back and I have always heard and seen in our curriculum also, it should be CRC approach. Now, this following this approach is very, very difficult. It's a very striking, a very fine balance. Your experience is okay, find some loose ends there, it can be plugged. I also come from the same school of thought. That instead of talking, everything is good, there is no doubt about it, but if you pick up some loose ends, probably it will help the speaker in the next week. Complete the entire cycle, the entire yeah. story. Yeah. So, uh, this is where I uh, am always in dilemma. Follow CRC approach, then in that process, we miss some of the loose ends also. So, what you could do in, uh, specifically, it's not, there's no hard and fast rule as such. See, Mr. Dhoni was such a great keeper. He had a very different approach. So, whatever approach works for you, the the only thing that you should understand is try to write down the points. Like if you say about good points, write three best points and the points of improvement. Maybe you could have four or five. Just pick up two or maximum. I would say one point. As an evaluator, you can just tell him one point. So you can keep these three good points, add this as a feedback, and closing you put it as a summary. Uh, the summary is a good point. So you can have the CRC approach as well, plus you can have your own points as well. Usually I follow that uh, during my evaluations. Thank you. Yes. So this is regarding the table topic. Sometimes you get a topic which you have no clue of. How to deal with that? That is a very uh, interesting situation. Um, see, usually there's a big. Uh, usually in competitions, the quote is quite big. Uh, what you could do is, it might take you 10 seconds. You stand there, try to this because the heartbeat is beating so fast. Sometimes we don't understand the topic itself. So take 10 seconds with you. If you're still not able to decipher the topic, at least a few words that you can collect off, speak on them. But make sure that you leave a mark at the end. Because there you're not going to be, you would have the content as well. But if you're not able to understand the topic, catch the words that you can understand and make up a story about it. Is usually the approach that I follow. So I have two questions. One is regarding the table topics and that is that how can you prepare for a table topic contest provided that the topics which are in that contest are mostly abstract. They'll give you a topic out of the blue and, and it is completely random because I've been in one of the competitions. So they, they give you a very abstract topic. So how do you prepare for such kind of topics? Sure. Uh, well, one thing I would like to share my experience. I had a mentor with me. Uh, my mentor was sitting in London. Uh, we used to connect. He had a very different time zone. What my mentor used to do is, he used to tell me, watch YouTube videos of area level, district level and division level competitions. He says, find the topic there. Stop your video, everything that you do, just hear the topic. The YouTube videos are available for free. So you can go to that source, hear the topic, pause everything and record yourself. Record for those two minutes and then share me the video. Once you do that, then you hear the champion speaking. Then you see how you can improve. So we always learn from others' uh, things, others' way of speaking as well. So this trait, even you could use and uh, I think this would be a good feedback. You can connect with your mentor or you can even record your own self and hear yourself. You hear the champion speaking, then you hear yourself. Then you understand, oh, this could be an approach that I could have used for this topic. Right. Another question was regarding the speech, if I may. So, 
how do you give an introduction and how do you give an ending for the speech from the perspective of the judge? Like if I am the judge, how should I evaluate the speech on the basis of the introduction and the uh, conclusion that has been given? So for me, the introduction would be the title. Right. Uh, the title of the speech. That is the first thing that before even the person has come on the stage, uh, you, are, you are very curious to know what the title actually means. So that you show your curiosity to the, the evaluator panel over there that I am curious to know right from the start before even he has come on the stage. So your title could be the most important thing and uh, the, between you have those three to four points and the CRC approach and conclusion always leave a summary. Summary is the most important thing is what they look into. That today if I go back home, what is the speech that uh, maybe, what did I learn from that speech? I close my eyes, I close my ears. One thing that I remember from that speech, you should be able to catch up that. And have a fellow, sorry, the word, the love of uh, beauty of uh, hearing carefully. You know, I feel sometimes you're like a CID officer, you catch the nuances, the small intrinsic parts of the speech. So an evaluator should be able to do that. So that would be my starting and the ending. I want to add something on table topic speeches. Sure. Uh, this is the most fascinating thing which I find in Toastmasters Club. And lately what I started doing that whatever topics are coming, I keep making a list. And once, sometime in the day, I'll just speak randomly. That's the best way. Because if you've got a list of some thousand topics, you will become master. And I'm not guaranteeing that you will still be able to crack it because once you reach to that place, like today in the Sai speech, I missed telling you that, okay, silent your phone. <laughs> okay, it happens. It happens. It's not that you have to memorize everything. But practice, by practice only it will come. There is no other method. And try to visualize. If you are picking up some word, you know, words from that uh, topic given to you, if you can visualize few words, go in that story enough. And keep your story personal. Yeah, you connect with the audience. Then to say generic things, always keep a story personal. It makes a big difference. On that note, uh, I'll not take any more time. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you. Just press it, signing off from the Thank you, Jaspit, for your fellow journey of post